Welcome to this ADF Insider Basic Seminar. My name is Shel Schmelzer, I'm a Senior Group Manager at Oracle, and in this seminar we'll give you an introduction to the Oracle ADF Faces components. Oracle ADF Faces is the top layer in our web user interface development framework. In Oracle ADF, we use an MVC approach to build user interfaces, and the ADF Faces components as, uh, acts as the view layer for this architecture. Our architecture is based on the JSF standard, the Java Server Faces technology, which is the standard MVC framework in Java E. However, at Oracle, we extend the capabilities of JSF in several dimensions. In the UI aspect, we use ADF Faces to provide us with, with a richer set of JSF components that provide a much more dynamic user interface. The ADF controller extends the JSF controller layer and allows us to create reusable task flows, and the ADF binding layer allows us to connect the view layer and the controller layer to the model layer in a visual and declarative way. All of those layers together create an MVC architecture which is very easy to use and build applications with. In this seminar we'll focus on the top layer, the ADF Faces components. Oracle ADF Faces Rich Client Components is a set of over 150 JSF components. Those components provide a very rich functionality through AJAX which is baked into the component. The components themselves have rich functionality and behavior that you can leverage at runtime. Beyond the components, the framework offers a lot of capabilities for building user interfaces. One key aspect is the fact that the look and feel of the application is pluggable. You can actually develop skins to change the overall look and feel of your application. The components also support accessibility and internalization. Beyond the regular components that you'll find in any set of components such as button checkboxes and tables, we offer unique components such as charts, Gantt, geographical map, pivot table, calendars, carousels, and more. The framework offers some other built-in functionality such as drag and drop framework, dialog and pop-up window framework, active data support allowing you to do push to the client, as well as templating and declarative component to enhance the reusability of the user interfaces parts that you're building. Let's start by reviewing the various ADFSs components and what they offer. The first group of components that you'll encounter is called the layout components. Those components will help you arrange the content of your page by using areas and relative positioning in those areas and between those areas to lay out your page. They allow you to create advanced layout as well as layouts that can change at runtime using advanced components. To demo the layout component, we'll start by creating a new JSF template for pages. You build JSF templates in JDeveloper like you build any other page. However, one thing you need to do is make a definition of the template and provide the property for it. We're going to use a two-part template. We're going to define a new template. And while this can use uh, one of the quick start layout that we have for various templates, we're actually going to start from a blank page and walk up. So the template is going to have two facets. This is the locations where people can drop their own content inside the template. Um, we're going to create um, actually a top section and a bottom section. Another thing you can define for a template are attributes or parameters that are going to be passed. So for example we're going to use a title attribute that we're going to pass to the template and we can define a default value for it. Now we're inside the JDeveloper Visual Editor for JSF. And here we're going to start by using some of the layout components to design our page. We'll start with a decorative box at the outset. The decorative box is um, creating a layout divided into two sections, where the main section can have different color schemes, like that. 
I'm going to use the medium color scheme in this case. We have rounded corners for our page. And in the top section we're going to define an area for um, our title for the page and a logo for the page. So one aspect to know about layout component is that they contain other components and the layout components can control how the other components are going to be positioned relatively to one another. For example, we can take a component, layout component called panel group layout. This one will group several items inside it and we can uh, decide that the layout that they are going to be grouped in is going to be horizontal. This means that they will be placed one next to the other. Now we can go and pick up some components such as a logo for our application. Okay. After the logo we're going to use another layout component called the spacer to provide a little space here. Okay. We can define how big this space is going to be. This is in pixels. And after that we want to actually show a text item with the page title. So we're going to take um, an output text component and just place it in here. Okay. The value for components can be defined here and you can use an expression language to access um, various variables. So for example in our case we're going to use the attribute of the template that we are passing called the title. So we're basically referencing the page attribute called title. And this is what's going to be displayed here in the template. For the rest of the template, we're going to split this main area into two sections using a panel splitter, another layout component. We're going to actually split them to have one on top of the other by changing the orientation to vertical. And then we're going to define the facets into which people can drop their own content. So we're going to have a top facet and a bottom facet. So this is the layout for our pages and we can now define multiple pages that will use this layout. So if we go and create a new JSF page now one of the templates that we can use is the two-part template we just defined. As you can see, the background is grayed out because we can't change it directly and there are two areas into which we can actually drop items in order to change them. So because we're using a template here, as we said, the template accepts a parameter or an attribute okay, called title. So we can provide the value here, which would be house search. Okay. Then we can continue working with the layout components to further tune this instance of the page. For example, we can use a panel tab layout. This creates tabs on our page. We can go to each tab and modify the text. And add additional tabs. The tabs are being created using a show detail item component. Into the top part we're going to drag and drop a panel collection. panel collection can display a collection of data and it provides various operations on this collection. Let's go into the houses info tab and for this area we actually want to present um, two, tab two boxes and we're going to place them inside the panel dashboard. Right. So one other aspect to know about layout components, they can control again the positioning and stretching of the components inside them. So for example in our situation right now we have a panel dashboard inside a tab component and the tab can specify whether it's going to stretch the children components and this is what we're going to specify for the panel dashboard. The panel dashboard can then specify how many columns it's going to display. So for example right now it is set to three columns so if we take three boxes and put them in here they will be displayed in three columns and if we add another one 
sorry, not inside another one, but after one, we're starting a second line. Okay. In our case, what we actually want to do is we want to show two columns, like that, and you can see the boxes are rearranged automatically. Again, um, we're only going to use two boxes in our scenario, so we're going to remove the two other ones. And we can also change the size of the boxes by specifying the default size in the panel collection in the panel dashboard specification. So let's do this size. Right. Again for each box you can go ahead and specify a different color, uh, sorry a different title. Like that. As well as many other properties. Right, so now we have our page layout complete. Common components is where you'll find the majority of the ADFS's components. Those are the components that you use to display information, update information, and invoke various operations in the page. They include input components with various types of components that allow you to insert or update data, output components allowing you to display information, active components that allow you to use push to update the content of them dynamically, navigation components that allow you to navigate between pages as well as invoke various operations, query components that allow you to search information, table components allowing you to show collections of information, and various other miscellaneous components. Let's see how we can add a common components to our page in JDeveloper. Now we're going to use some components to actually display data in our page. To do that, we're going to take the shortcut of using the ADF binding layer to simplify the way that we bind data into components on the page. So in here we actually have a view object uh, with information about houses, so we can simply drag and drop it into the page to create components. For example, we can create a read-only table. Turn on specific behaviors on the table. We can remove column. We can rearrange columns. And when we click OK, the table is being created for us. Again, for the table itself, we can then fine-tune behaviors using properties. If you look into the definition of the table, you'll see that the table is actually constructed from columns, and inside each column you can see an output text component, and you have access to each one of those um, to modify them if needed. Same way that we created a table, we can take the same collection and drag and drop it over here, but this time to create a form. This would be an updatable form. Again, we can remove specific columns that we're not interested in. Okay. that. In here you can actually see which types of um, fields are going to be used. Okay. So in our case you can actually see that most of the components are input, co input text components. However, two of the components have different format. Let's resize the screen to have better editing capabilities. This is for example an input date component if you click on it you can see it in here and the city is going to be displayed as an input combo box list of values this is coming from the definition of the uh, attribute in the model layer we can also take existing components and modify them to be displayed using other components for example let's look at the room input text and we can right click on it and say convert it to another type of input component for example, let's use an input number slider. We can control how the slider is going to look and behave, for example, the range and the step size. Similarly, we can take the price field and convert it to use an input number spin box. 
again we can specify um, step size for example so price increases are going to be done in thousands of dollars just like we dragged and drop um, a complete collection of information to create a form or a table we can also drag and drop specific columns for example we can take the picture drag and drop it over here to create an output text now in reality the output text component is not the best way to display an image um, another way to display an image is using an image component and this shows us another way to bring components into the page and that's directly from the component palette so for example we can take an image component and drag and drop it over here and then we can specify some parameters for it so because we want to display here the actual image that is specified here we can just copy the value expression language from here and assign it as the source for the image here similarly we can drag and drop uh, directly the show text component over here as an in, um, input text or output text let's do an output text in this case okay. and again we can directly convert it later on to a more advanced component, for example, a rich text editor, like that. Now we can save our page and we can actually run it. When the page shows up, um, we can actually see our data displayed in various input and output components. Let's look for example at the table and see some of the behaviors it provides out of the box. First of all, there's the ability to actually move columns around. For example, we can take the price column and drag it to be the second column. Another option is to freeze a specific column and scroll the others. As you can see, there's also a scroll bar that allows us to scroll through the records. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that when I scroll, you'll see a, a little pop-up message coming up here saying, Fetching data. This is actually demoing the Ajax capability of the table to get information into the client dynamically from the server. So when the table is first rendered, we don't actually de deliver all the information from the server, all the records from the server to the client, because this will o um, overload our network and client memory consumption. The table is smart enough to know how to get specific sets of records and display them as needed, uh, therefore reducing network traffic. You can do further operations on the table. For example, you can filter the table. This will display only houses in a specific price range. You can then sort those records. The table can be detached into its own floating window to display the information. It can also be reattached. And using drop-down menus, you can do further things like hide columns, uh, do formatting of columns, as well as advanced sorting options. In this section of the page, we can see some of the input components that allow us to update fields. So this, for example, would be a regular input text field. This is a select field, where we have a drop-down list, and it is combined together with a list of value components. The list of value allows us to search for specific records. and then choose the correct value and get it back into the screen. This is the price spin box where we can increase the price in thousands of dollars or decrease in thousands of dollars. This is a slider that allows us to indicate how many rooms are in the house. And this is a date field where you can see for example immediate value validation done uh, on the client and this is actually achieved using JavaScript and the nice thing of course is that you didn't have to write this JavaScript this is a built-in capability of the input date field just as 
is the little calendar that you can pop up to choose a value. Here you can see the image, as well as the rich text editor, which as the name suggests allows you to do rich text editing, for example increase size and change fonts of items. The layout components allow us to resize the page as needed to display the information in the way that we want. Panel boxes can be collapsed and tabs can be switched between. While we're watching this page, it would be nice to see the effect that we can have using a template. So let's switch back into JDeveloper. If you remember, we started with a template page. And what we can do is we can choose the title that we have here and change a property of it. For example, we can change the style. For example, let's choose a different color and a different size. And just save those changes in the template. If we now go back to our page and refresh it in our browser, we can see the changes have been applied. So as we said, the uh, common components are divided into input and output components that we have on our page. For example, we have um, some fields, some sliders, some selectors. And navigation components, those are for example buttons or links or menus that we have on our page. List selection components such as the drop-down list, the list of value, as well as a shuttle component that you can see up here. Um, table, trees and carousel can help you display collections of information. And there are various other components that you can use in your application. Let's look into another type of um, output component that allows us to show a collection of information and that would be the carousel. Each house has a list of pictures associated with it. And we can drag this list of pictures into the page, again, either to create a form or a table or a tree, or in our case, we want to use a carousel component. Okay. Inside the carousel, we're going to display images. So we'll take the image component. And using expression language, we're going to specify the name of the field that we want to display here. Now let's look at a couple of navigation items that we can define. Uh, we'll use a menu in that case. Over here in the menu section, we can insert a new menu item. We can give it a different name. We can associate specific behaviors, such as detachable, to the menu. Inside the menu, we can then define menu options. Let's do a menu item, right? and the first menu item that we created, we're going to call it export to Excel. And after this menu item, we can define another one, and we can define another one. Each one of those menu items has an action as well as an action listener. Those can be used to navigate to specific pages or to invoke specific logic when a menu option is pressed. Similarly, you can define toolbars and inside the toolbars you can insert toolbar buttons that will do specific operations. on the page now. So in the page right now, we can switch over to the Pictures tab to look at pictures of the house using a carousel component. And we also have a drop-down menu, which is detachable, and we can take it to areas of the page and choose options in it.
The next set of components that we're going to talk about is the operation components. Those components add functionality and behaviors to existing components. They include things like drag and drop capabilities, listener, client listener capabilities, um, various validators and converters as well. In most cases, those components save you the need to write specific JavaScript on the client in order to implement advanced behaviors for your component. Let's see how we can use some of those operation components in our page. We're going to use the menu that we defined and add specific operations to the menu items. For example, if we want to export the data from the table into an Excel spreadsheet, we can write a bunch of JavaScript to do this operation, or we can use one of the operation component called Export Collection Action Listener and associate it with a specific menu item. What we need to specify is which object do we actually want to export, and using this visual editor we can navigate to the table which is the component we want to export, and we're basically specifying the ID of the table component, and then the format to export into. Similarly, if we want to show a printable view of the table, we can take another operation component called Show Printable Page Behavior and associate it with the second menu option. For the third menu option, we want to show the agent details, and we're going to uh, take this opportunity to show you um, how to do pop-ups and windowing inside ADF. So in our page, we're going to define a new component using the pop-up tag. Inside the pop-up, we're going to create, and this is where you can create actually pop-up menus or pop-up windows or notes or just other items that you want to pop up. We're going to use a dialog window. Okay. And we can again specify various properties of this window. For example, how many buttons are going to be displayed. And you can of course change the um, text on those buttons as well as define your own buttons if you want to. given name and let's decide what we want to display here we can actually show an image of the agent like that so this is our little pop-up and we're now wanting to tell our menu the third menu option in here to show this pop-up Again, instead of writing JavaScript that would call a, a new window JavaScript function, we're going to use a built-in operation component called show pop-up behavior. Drag and drop it onto the menu option, specify which pop-up we want to show. Again, here we basically need to specify the ID of the component, so P1 in this case. Okay. And then the event that would actually trigger this, and in our case it's the action for the menu option, or basically clicking the menu option. So this is how we add a menu to our page. You can save everything, and go back to our page, and reload it. Okay, let's filter our um, page so we can for example say we're just looking for houses in um, a specific range okay resort the data and rearrange columns so for example let's take the price move it to be the second column and now that we have this table on our page with this set of data we want to actually export it to excel so we're going to invoke our menu option which will create an Excel spreadsheet for us. The Excel spreadsheet that we get matches our table structure one-to-one, -one, including the specific ordering of column, sorting, and the specific data set that we wanted to display. Similarly, we can use the show agent 
menu option to show our pop-up and again this is a modal window we can't click outside we have to release the window in order to come back to our page this would actually be a good time to show you the code behind the scene for our page so so far we did everything visually in terms of building the page but as always in JDeveloper you can split the document and actually look at the source behind the page so for example let's look at the print button you can see the definition here and you can of course go into it and change things for example change the text property which would sync over here as well as over here okay. the code editor in JDeveloper is pretty smart so it can automatically close tag for you as well as provide you with code insight so by doing this code change you can actually save the page and go back to our page and reload it so we've just assigned the print behavior to this button so when we're clicking the printing button we'll get a view of the table without all the surrounding images, uh, active components and just the data itself in a way that is easy to print A unique set of components in our ADF faces is the ADF faces data visualization component those are components that are meant to visualize data in meaningful ways they include, for example, the graph component, which has over 50 types of graphs supported. The graph component can display information either as a flash or a PNG format, and the graphs are actually interactive, so you can do things like zoom, drill, uh, scroll, uh, define time selectors, as well as animation on the graph. So this is the type of user interface that you can build with Oracle ADF faces and the graphing component. Another way to visualize data is using gauges and we have various types of gauges including the dial, status meter and LED type of gauge. We can also show information relating to geographical maps using the geographical map component. You can overlay the map component with various uh, sets of data and display thematic pie, bar and point themes on top of the geographical map. The map can be at the street level um, or at a higher level, as you can see in the images. The pivot table allows us to display information according to various axes and as well as move the axes around um, to analyze the data and also provide you with the ability to do drill down as well as editing of the data in the table. We also have support for Gantt charts using the Gantt chart component which allows you to show either project scheduling or resource Gantt and again with all the capabilities of zooming in, expanding, collapsing, defining relationship between operations, etc. The hierarchy view allows you to display information in a hierarchical way allows you to dynamically expand and collapse nodes, zoom in, zoom out and changing of the layout while looking at the hierarchical data So now we're going to look at some of the data visualization components and their capabilities and simply add more functionality to our page. Let's add a couple of other tabs here. We're going to use one tab, we're going to call it um, the map tab. Let's add another tab, which would show us a graph of the houses. And now let's actually get some data displayed here. Similarly, we go to the data control, drag and drop our data into the page and then decide how to drop it. And we're going to use a geographic map with point themes. So this would be a map with points on it. 
To display the map, we need a connection to a map server. The map server delivers the uh, images of the maps to our application. On the map, we're going to overlay a theme displaying the houses. You can use an address to specify where the houses are, or if you have the exact coordinates, you can use that as well. we'll specify those, specify a label, we're going to use the street for the label, and a piece of data that you want to show, so in our case this is going to be the price of the house. You can also enable row selection. So this theme is going to be called houses. We're going to copy this because one other thing that you can do again for the map component just like any other component is set various attributes for example the starting point for the map or in our case automatic zoom onto the houses so this is what we're setting in this property over here the map and the other data visualization component are under a separate component library here right? and you can again just like any other component, drag and drop them onto the page. So for example, if we have the map component in here, we can take a toolbar for the map and directly bring it into the page. It will be connected to our map component and will enable us to do more operations on the map. So next we're going to take and drag the same set of data into the page and this time I'm going to choose a graph layout. We have over 50 types of uh, graphs in here. Each graph has subgraphs types. And um, we're just going to use a simple bar graph in our example. Going to display um, the street on one axis and the price on another one. Can actually switch between the two. Click OK. And graph is going to be displayed on our page here. The graph, like any other components, has a set of properties that you can set, for example, uh, behaviors such as three-dimensional animation, as well as the style of the graph, which allows you to switch between various color schemes. We're going to use another data visualization component called the gauge to represent the price. So we're going to place it immediately after the price field. We're going to use a dial gauge. Again, we have different types of gauges that we can use. We're going to use a simple dial gauge with thresholds. The first thing you want to define for the gauge is, of course, the value for that is going to be displayed here. This is going to be the same value that we're showing in the price field, so we're just going to copy this property over here. Okay. And then you want to define the minimum, maximum values that are going to be displayed here. So this is the price range. Actually, start probably from somewhere around 250, like that. And then the other thing that we defined for the gauge is a threshold set. So we have three thresholds. Um, you can define as many as you want. Um, in our case, for the lower prices, we're going to display them in green. So those will be prices up to 800,000. One level above it is going to be displayed in yellow. Those are houses up until this price range. And then the houses in a higher price are going to be displayed in red. Okay, like that. Save everything and rerun our page. So when the application comes up now, we can actually see a representation of our price in a visual way, over here. We can also see a map 
displaying the houses again those are located in various location and uh, this map is very rich in functionality you can zoom in and out you can click of course and do all sorts of other operations through the toolbar itself and the graph of course shows us information about specific houses and their price so let's finish up by talking about some of the other framework capabilities of Oracle IDF faces one key capability is declarative partial page rendering that's a core functionality for modern web application and that's the uh, capability to change the value of one area of the page depending on changes in another area of the page for example what you can see here is an example where when we choose sit, uh, zip code the city is going to be updated automatically you can achieve partial page rendering in Oracle IDF faces using either programmatic technique or a simple um, declarative uh, mechanism. All you need to do is define one component and its dependency on another component and this is done by setting um, a partial trigger property for the component that depends on another component and the uh, or, um, event originating component needs to have an auto submit property set to two. Another very rich functionality in Oracle ADF Faces is the JavaScript API that it provides. This allows you to interact with ADF Faces components from client-side JavaScript um, code. It allows you to um, react to events on the client and um, do various things in your page, as well as invoke server-side code from events on the client. As a general rule, you should try and minimize the amount of usage that you do for this API, but it's there in order to help you when you don't have another declarative way of achieving the capabilities that you're looking for. Templating is another thing that Oracle ADF Faces provides. We already saw that in the demo. That's the ability to define reusable ADF Faces page layouts um, that contains placeholders and custom um, parameters and then reuse them across your application to create a more consistent look and feel for your application. Another core capability of Oracle IDF Faces is the ability to create declarative components. Those are composite components that are constructed from other components. They can of course be customized to behave in a specific way using attributes, methods and facets that you can define on those components. Once you define a component, you can package it and reuse it across your application and in other applications. One last uh, capability of um, Oracle IDF Faces is skinning. That's the ability to change the look and feel of your application using specific standard look and feels that you define. Those definitions are defined in simple CSS or cascading style sheet files, and they can control fonts, colors, and images that um, define the look and feel of each one of the ADF Faces components. You'll create those by extending an existing skin that Oracle ADF Faces provides and overwriting the specific things that you want to be to look differently. The skin selection can be changed at runtime. For the next section we're going to show you something that actually doesn't work properly in our application right now and this is when we're clicking on different houses in the table what we would like to happen is that for this section of the page we want the details to update to represent the actual house that we're showing and this doesn't happen right now so let's see how we can actually make sure that this part of the page is aware of events in this part of the page Okay. another thing that we're going to do is show you how to create a connection between this price field and this gauge so for example if we actually change the price here right now there's no change happening here right and we want it to happen automatically so let's see how we can use partial page rendering to achieve those two things so partial page rendering is going to be defined between one object that depends on another object in our case we can define it on a complete container so for example on this tab we can specify that this tab depends on events in the table to do that we're going to go to the um, partial trigger property of the tab 
and we're going to tell it that it depends on the table component. So we did it for the full tab now. So everything in it is going to be refreshed the minute that someone changes something in selection in the table. We can do the same thing at lower level. For example, whenever the price changes, we want to update the gauge component. So to do that, we actually need the price to automatically submit the changes, its changes into the database. So there's a property for the price field called auto submit, which we're going to turn into two. Right? The price also has an ID, it3, and we're going to use this ID as the partial trigger for updates to the gauge component. When the page loads up now, you can see that clicking a specific records in the table will update the data in the tab. So only this part of the page is being updated. Similarly, if we go and look at the gauge component and the price component in here, and we switch the price, for example, to have 4 the minute that we will leave the field, you can see the changes happening over here. Additional capability that we will show you now is the skinning. So the application that we have right now is already set up to have multiple skins defined in here. The definition of the skins is in the Trinidad skins file and the actual skin being used is defined in here and it depends on a parameter on the URL. So right now this is the skin that we're using which is the default skin. We can specify a different skin we'll get the same application same functionality with a different look and feel this time. We can go and change it to another skin As you can see, it's a totally different color scheme and font usage and also the display, for example, of tabs is different but the functionality of the application is still the same. To summarize, Oracle ADFA is to simplify the way that you build rich web user interfaces. It provides you with a way to lay out your page and achieve complex layouts it provides with a lot of components that allow you to have rich interaction with your end users. You can visualize your information in meaningful ways and the whole development experience is very visual and declarative in nature. Thank you for attending this seminar.